Joining me now, Conservative Leadership Candidate Roman Babber. Good to have you back on the program, sir. Good to be with you. You recently said, I don't recognize my country, censorship, medical segregation, unlawful emergency declaration, and that you're running to defend the democracy from freedom. Um, I know your background. You look what's happening against in places like Ukraine. Um, what is the freedom that you believe is being so stolen? We have free elections, we have free courts, you have the free, free, freedom to protest. What's not free? What are you so worried about? Well, let's, let's just examine uh, a few of the propositions that I put forth. First of all, we have unprecedented censorship. We have three or four bills moving through Parliament in which the government seeks to abridge Canadians' freedom of speech. Um, I think that abridging speech is, is not just bad for democracy, it's bad for public policy. We see censorship on social media. Uh, something that uh, is entirely inexcusable. Uh, but what are you talking have... about exactly? Like, I, I, I just want to be clear. I don't sure. want to talk in generalities. Give us an example. Okay, so, for instance, we, we see multiple instances where our accounts get shadow banned or where content that Canadians shared gets flagged and their accounts are subsequently compromised. I had a speech of mine at Queen's Park, parliamentary speech, that, that had a warning uh, by Facebook, and, and we went to Facebook and and they've apologized and said that it was caught by a mistake and subsequently amended. Uh, Evan, I think that it's naive to believe that we don't have uh, an abridgment of speech on social media. Canadians have the right to be wrong. We have a very clear line, a sensible line, an appropriate line articulated in the criminal code, which is don't incite violence, don't demonize an, an identifiable group of people, something that, in fact, the, the, the prime minister does. Uh, but short of that, um, I don't understand why we should be abridging speech right. in, in a free but parliament. But it's, I'm, I'm not arguing if you agree with the Liberals. You, you're a Conservative. Of course, you're not going to agree with their view on it. But, but the picture that you paint is a country that's, uh, that there's no way to articulate your, your dissent. You can dissent. There are votes in Parliament. We have these, we have these other um, ways for you to have checks and balances. What's wrong with that? Well, thankfully, we still have the ability to express ourselves and to vote in Parliament. But that doesn't mean that we should not have friction on speech. The other thing I'd say to you, generally to the democracy point, close to 20% of Canadians are still treated like second-class citizens. It's not based in science. It makes no sense. We're the only country in the world that still discriminates against citizens or residents because of their medical status. And, and look, we've seen an unprecedented erosion of democracy. You're talking to me about a free right to protest. I'm not sure that we've seen a free right to protest. We didn't even see a free well, right what? to donate to a charitable oh, cause. I, I, oh. But, sir, are, are, you don't sure. think that the trucker convoy was the free right to protest? There was three weeks right outside. The, I was there every day. They were protesting every day. They parked their trucks on streets. They shut down streets. They shut down business for three weeks. How much more freedom do you want? That was as free as it gets. One minute. So there's civil recourse, right? There's highway legislation. There's municipal legislation. Uh, an Ottawa resident applied for a court order um, to stop the honking. And, and in fact, it stopped. The system worked. But it culminated in an unlawful de declaration of the Emergencies Act as successor to the War Measures Act. But you don't know, just to be clear, you're right, it was controversial. We don't know if it was unlawful yet. It, by law, they legally, well, we first that. of all, there was a vote in Parliament. Number, number one, there was a vote, so the majority voted for it. Second, by law, there's a judicial review, as you know, as you know and there's an inquiry into it. So, again, you're characterizing it as unlawful, but that's not true. Well, let's talk about that. So, first of all, the, the, the emergency legislation is clear that it should not be invoked if you have other means of, of dealing with the alleged right. emergency. And clearly there's other legislation available. Second of all, a province, uh, the, the responsibility first rests with the province. And if a province isn't able to, then it goes to the federal government. Not a single law enforcement agency asked for the tools that, that were made available right. to it by the emergency. But, but, but again, and what, and again you're, me, you're but making, also, but, you're making me, arguments. We're also talking about attacking Canadians that were not in Ottawa. We're familiar with instances where, where, where people's bank accounts were frozen because they donated it to a charitable cause sure. that subsequently, retroactively, was deemed unlawful. But Mr. Mr. Babber, Mr. Babber, these are fair points, and, and we've debated them. I've, ha I've had the, the Minister of Public Safety and the Minister of Justice on this program asking about all those things, as has the opposition. Democracy, this is, these are legitimate questions about the exercise of, civil, uh, of yeah. infringement on civil liberties. That's happening. But your campaign has been dominated by your views of the pandemic. Not, it's not the only thing. That's why you were kicked out of the Doug Ford Progressive Conservative Party. Uh, you want to become the Prime Minister, and you said if you do, you'll fire Canada's top doctor, Dr. Theresa Tam. 
Under what grounds would you, an elected official with no, no medical knowledge, fire the appointed chief public health officer? So the pandemic response was an abject failure. We're seeing that the pandemic response has caused considerable harm to Canadians, whether it's their surgeries canceled or cancer screenings missed. And instead of focusing protection on uh, vulnerable populations, protecting and investing in long-term care homes where 80% of the risk was, we have now created a mental health pandemic. We, uh, Canada's healthcare is on the ropes. We are unable to catch up with the 800,000 or so surgeries uh, and, and procedures that were canceled during the pandemic. Um, I think that there's nothing wrong with demanding accountability, but I want to come back to the democracy point. No, no, hold on, hold on. I think, don't, don't skip this. This, is, this, was, this animated your political career. Sir, there are 40,799 people who lost their lives to COVID-19, more than 13,000 since January 2020 in Ontario alone. I know you have alleged that there's a mental health and a suicide crisis, but back in 2021, when you were an MPP in the Ford, you wrote saying that the lockdown is deadlier than COVID but you know sure. that's patently false, sir. I'm not trying to diminish yeah. the mental health crisis, One second. but you are okay, diminishing well, you like the COVID crisis. It's good that we're relitigating the interview from last time. We have a very live race here on equalization, on supply management, on foreign affairs. You wanna relitigate lockdowns? I'm content to do so. First of all, we need to adjust our numbers because we haven't differentiated that those that died due to COVID and from COVID. Second of all, it's not clear that there was any efficacy to lockdowns in preventing those deaths. It's not about who gets, it's not about how many people get COVID. It's about who gets COVID because we know that the disease is very uh, transmissible and stoppage arresting the spread is very, very difficult, especially when you open up. What we should have been doing is we should have been staffing long-term care homes and congregate settings where most of the risk was. We should have been forefront about the fact that metabolic conditions are something that increases the risk. Instead of locking down healthy children and potentially making them sick. The deadline's coming up, June 3rd to sign up members. Are you confident in your membership signups? Can you give us a sense of where you're going to end up or are you hoping to um, be viable or are you hoping to lend your support to someone else? Look, um, when when we first met, you're, you're asking, you, you questioned my raison d'etre in this race to begin with, and uh, and I think we've run a pretty good race thus far. My application was approved. We raised the 300000 plus the administrative fee necessary to get in the race. Uh, we have the lowest average donation size of all campaigns, uh, 10 times less, in fact, than some of my competitors, according to Q1 figures. Um, we are a truly grassroots movement, um, I think we're overperformed and have exceeded expectations in the first two debates. And, and most importantly, um, we're not just talking about uh, COVID or a pandemic response. We have legitimate discussion about Canada's democracy and, and where we're headed. And uh, unlike media speculation that suggested that we're going to be uh, containing our, our race to lockdowns and, and COVID and, and freedom, it's in fact the other candidates that are coming closer to our, to our way of thinking and saying, yes, we need to think about democracy. We need to think about freedom. So I like the fact that myself and my supporters and my team are helping to shape the future of the Conservative Party of Canada. All right, I got to leave it there. Roman Babber, always good to have you on the show. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Evan.